my name is Ransom, and welcome back to Disco Elysium. All right, let's get into this Hamdal information. Uh, da, 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 da. There we go. Uh, the shirt celebrates a false hero. Wait, was it Man from Hamdal was real? Ah, oh, there we go. Okay. Uh, it's simple, really. To be with you. Hang on. Say more. Is so I went through all of this in the last episode. Okay, so yeah, that, that's actually not a unique thing to do here. Sure, I'll, uh, uh, should I buy the t-shirt? I don't know if I want to buy the t-shirt. I don't necessarily want that t-shirt. Representative of a sexist ideology. Nah, I'm fine. Thanks. Do have something truly cool. Don't have higher interfacing yet. That's way too expensive. I might have actually just been talking with you. Hello again. How can I help you? Okay. So Roy's prices are strange and Roy doesn't really sleep have given me some extra pumps here. Sure. 92. Great. Feeling warm and enthralled by the movement of light while the, uh, the mind continues to race forward. Lucky bastard. He's probably on... Piholodon. Piholodon? It's tough to come by on the street. Piholodon, what's that? A drug developed by the military to treat and prevent radiation sickness. It has psychedelic side effects. And it makes your eyes turn yellow. D does it just make your liver fail? <laughs> is, is that it? Hmm. I'm gonna be uh, straightforward, get straight to the point. So. Where does a man get Pierholodon uh, these, uh, these days? He takes a step back, studying you. How would I know? There's a note of indignation in his voice. Interesting. Those triangle patches on his vest, you have a feeling they mean something. Like they're similar to the halogen rectangle on your jacket. Okay, so guys, an ex-soldier. Um, chill out, man. I'm a chill out cop who just wants some of what you're having. Wink, no judgment. Uh, just curious, I probably did loads of Pierholodon uh, before I lost my memory. Say, what's with the triangles on your vest? I'm gonna say that first. He hesitates. I was... I was with the Emergency Relief Brigade. You know, after the People's Pile disaster. <coughs> <coughs> he coughs as if to mark his words. Had to take Pihoridon for radiation sickness. That's what you're just hinting at right now, wasn't it? The People's Pile? What was that? A bad idea. Some poor leftists built a particle decay generator in hopes of bringing affordable electricity to underserved communities. It malfunctioned. Radioactive waste everywhere. Probably some of it in you, too. Uh, it feels like this is an analogue for Chernobyl, probably. Tell me more about this emergency relief brigade you're part of. He points to the white triangle and his uh, orange safety jacket. We were an all-volunteer force. Self-organized. Tried to help fire brigades contain the spill. On the patch, gamma radiations lines, uh, gamma radiation lines rather, cross with the red drop of blood. I lived by the river since I was a small boy. The Esperance. Didn't have the heart to let it go to shit without trying to do something. To help out. There wasn't much the volunteer force could do, however. We wasted years in the river mud. Years getting sick. He looks at the spiraling light and stops. Must have been tough. Radioactive cleanup, that is. He hesitates. There's a reason why everyone's tried to forget anything if it ever happened. And why no one else tried to replace or repair the pile. So much disappointment. And early deaths. Cancer, mostly. We all knew that was coming, even as we were cleaning up as best we could. Whose fault was it the generator failed? No one's. Everyone's. He sighs and shakes his head. So much bitterness. A bunch of poor people built themselves a primitive nuclear reactor hoping for the best. What do you think is going to happen? How'd you end up running a pawn shop? The cleanup happened 15 years ago. I was young then. Later my second aunt died. Left me this shack and the assorted junk in it. So I came here to Martinet. People told me don't go there. It's a shithole. I said, people, we just had a nuclear pile meltdown. I'm going to get as far from Farberg as I can. Still in the same city, but... Thanks for telling me. He shrugs. 
I like theory more than story. Outward movement, not vortices. Yeah, you gotta get in on those vortices, my man. Care to share your pyrolodon with me? Have you tried it before? It's almost like he's worried for you. I think I tried it once and liked it. I mean, maybe. Here you go, man. He presents a large cap-shaped object in the palm of his hand. Very odd looking. Not so sure about this. Wait, why wouldn't I be sure? Because it's an anti-radiation drug and you're a cop, not a post-apocalyptic scavenger? Yeah, sure, but ketamine's horse, uh, horse tranquilizer and I still did that. Thanks, man. Take the pyrrolodon. Of course. Also got a skill point off of that. Uh, let's bounce out of that conversation. Is there anything I need to pump here? I mean, if I pump, I can't, I, I don't actually even have the ability to pump perception at this point, right? You only can put a certain amount of levels in there. Yeah, like perception is actually full up on levels that I can provide to it at the moment. Maybe I should unlock another slot so I can finally learn about uh, magnesium being a magnesium based life form. Yeah. Gimme. Get internalized. Right. Let's have a little bit of a look across here. If nothing else, it'll help us get a little bit more money, hopefully. I should probably also pull out my Tare bottle. Also put that away so I get the bonuses back. The radio relay hums with electricity. Got some coins for me. Random bricks. Traffic beyond the gate. More abandoned motor lorries. Magnesium, great. Finally, we can ride the mag train. The sign says no entry. Someone scribbled an inverted star on it. That appears to be locked. We'll see if I can unlock it in any way. Yep, and we got the Jamrock Biker Cop Sunnies. Plus one to empathy, negative one to logic. Mm, What's that? No one use that. Uh, substance use, uh, plus one to psyche, negative one to health. A pretty little puck shaped cap of purple liquid that can bring on anything from hot flashes to military grade psychosis. With sufficient tolerance, however, it can make any weather feel balmy. If only for a while. And the Jamrock Micro Cop Sonnies. Uh, for taking your Harmel Ru Super Sonic out for a ride on the streets of Jamrock, where your heart is buried. Plus the empathy and lower the logic. Interesting. I haven't had that many things that increase my empathy. Although I have got the the ledger of failure and hatred, which increases it pretty ridiculously. Someone's broken down the fence and the barbed wire. It's not even the door in. Cool. A breaker box to relay the power radio pylon above you. Maybe there's something inside. Ha! Huh, with a bit of money. Neat. Ahead, decades old concrete defenses. Children play on them now. Ooh, can I check out these tracks? A creaking ahead. A broken axle grinding. This is... It's not... Banged up fuel canister, fine. This isn't the Cooper Kinema that Kim arrived in, is it? Sunken motor carriage. A banked up motor carriage lies half submerged in the icy water, slowly sinking into the insular Indian Ocean. Really? Seems like it's just a rock pool. Only the cabin top, rear wheels, and engine remain visible. Must be cold and lonely down there in the icy water. Remember the tire tracks in Martinet? This is where they were leading. Leading, rather. Uh, this is where the tracks on the plus were leading to. The motor carriage sits in the salty ocean, water, cold, and sad. It doesn't have an opinion. Most suspicious. I should investigate. A seagull takes off from the half-submerged machine. It's almost like the bird is acknowledging your decision. You get a sudden sinking feeling. Stomach acid comes up as you look at the motor carriage in a deep, dark, cold water. Why the doom and gloom? It's probably because it's mine. Uh, why the doom and gloom? It's just a sunken motor carriage. Some motor carriages are bound to end up in the sea. Look at the make of this MC. How long's it been here? Well, well, well. Looks like Jacob Earl's journey came to an abrupt end here. I don't, do I know who Jacob Earl is? 
I think I might have heard that name, but it's very long ago at least. Uh, right hand of the cold metal. The motor carriage is properly stuck in the ice. Getting it out would require a team of specialists. What's the make of the MC? Do I see a logo? The logo is too deep in the muddy, uh, murky water. You can't make it out, but you do see a monkfish float by. How long's it been here? The accident couldn't have happened too long ago. The ice hasn't closed up around the vehicle, so the crash must have happened eh, last Saturday or Sunday. Well, 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 looks like Jenkins Earth's journey came to an abrupt end here. Your mocking tone finds no response, but the motion of the waves. Yet another case of the engine displacement triumphing over the driver's IQ. The sad sunken vehicle refuses to respond. What should I do? Although the sunken motor carriage is probably flattered by you addressing it, it doesn't supply an answer. Wait for the low tide, then you should be able to access the cabin. Sit on a swing and wait for the tide to recede. As you sit down in the old rusty playground, the world around you becomes very silent. The hinges creak under your weight, dangerously so. Uh, nothing but a sound of seagulls high above in the sky, echoing like distant laughter. You sure there's not a call to Mama to car in there? You sure? Right. Ice cracks around the blue motor carriage in the sea. Whistle a tune for drama. Sure, 83. So. The tune on your lips forms a strange, yet undeniably beautiful contrast with the surrounding bleakness. <laughs> yes, that is Twisted Metal, if, uh, Twisted Metal, Twisted Wires, if you think. Uh, it's from the Kill Bill soundtrack. Uh, it's sad that no one and nothing but the sunken vehicle is here to witness it. But the unexpected beauty of the tune lifts your spirits, nonetheless. The clouds pass in the sky, and the shadow of the swing moves like an hour hand on a timepiece. 30 minutes have passed. Looks like this might take a while. Time to present a good topic for conversation. Uh, I wonder what all the people are, uh, in the city behind me are doing. Dreaming, drinking, fucking, fighting, trying to improve their lives, wishing for a better tomorrow. The tide sure is taking its sweet time. It's unclear whether the sunken vehicle agrees or not, but merely uttering these words give you the illusion of time speeding up. Just like how the crazy daredevil piloting that vehicle into, uh, must have accelerated into the sea. Oh, we've got our breakthrough already. Uh, clouds on the horizon grow darker, and the shadow of the swing set, uh, shadow of the swing set keeps climbing. You hear the distant rumble of the city. 30 minutes pass. Man, this is taking a long time. Yeah, it is. It feels as if the city behind you grows silent in the waiting. Seems like an entire eternity has passed. A dim light scatters from the cloud corner above the city, cloud cover above the city, rather. In it, you see the blue and white motor carriage slowly appear from the water, centimeter by centimeter, as the sea recedes. It's a Coupri 40. It's a workhorse of the motor park, favored by working men, government officers, firefighters, and I guess, maybe, animal control people? You know, those kinds of people. Uh, squint your eyes and say, is that a number on the side? Yeah, it's us. Knew it. Eh, number 41, as in Precinct 41. Come on, man, that's a ride. Oh, please, 41 could mean so many things. It's not like I own the number. Uh, I'm gonna say, oh, oh God, no. That's actually like the most appropriate response that I would feel, like the sinking dread. I'm so sorry, Harry. Says the sunken motor carriage. A massive pit opens up in your stomach and the most terrible feeling overcomes you. Nope. Just nope. Say no to this, Harry. Oh my god, it is mine! I drove my car into the sea! Yes, Harry. You did. No, no, no. Shake your head. Shake you head, sorry. No, no, no. Shake you head. No, no, no. Shake you <laughs> it's, a, it's a old reference, that one. Alright, do it. Found the traffic hooligan again, it damaged my morale. The sooner you accept it, the sooner you can move on. Ooh, wise words. Pretty uh, succinct there, though. Uh, maybe I was in pursuit of someone. Yeah, in pursuit of who? A boat? A seagull? How do we get you out? I can fix it. Uh, they're not going to take me back after this, are they? The badge, the gun, and now this. So I would, I would, like, immediately freak out probably have a panic attack <laughs> and then after that become extremely resolute to just fix it or you know 
failing that, forget it. So I think, I think we're still in panic phase. They're not going to take me back after this, are they? After losing every single thing you were entrusted with, I wouldn't hold my breath. How do we get you out? We don't. I can fix it. No, you can't. The damage is too extensive. Well, at least I can see what's in there now. An aggressive looking seagull lands on the swing set and stares at you with murderous look. You really need to keep moving. Go to your inventory and interact with the item by clicking interact tab and then interact, got it. Uh, let's pull this up first. You tell them, hell no, you're about to become a magnesium based life form. The age of the primitive carbon man is done. No longer must mankind rely on our slow working background radiation to take us further into our genetic destiny. This is the era of guided evolution and magnesium is the key. And you, you're the first of your species, the next step in human evolution, an advanced magnesium proto man who mags it up, drinks it down and sniffs it sideways. <laughs> Plus two to volition magnesium receptacle glands. Let's get rid of it. RCM badge, LT, and oh, if I came over here earlier, I could have used that for my case. Uh, Spree Core and Visual Calculus. Okay, this one's just a Spree Core and Shivers. RCM Commander's Jacket. A black uniform jacket with the RCM signature white logo on its right sleeve and backside. Letters inside the collar read LTN 2JFR. I'm a lieutenant? Am I? Wait, LTN? We'll, we'll, we'll see, we'll see. Um, the jacket of exceptional quality, other than some minor wear and tear. Banged up fuel canister. A dented stainless steel canister for transporting and storing heavy fuel. The logo on the side has been partially stripped over years of use. It's government issued red dye fuel oil inside looks like paint, though it smells much, much worse. Yeah, LTN. I gotta be a lieutenant, right? A uh, thick blue piece of acrylic covering a thin leaf of paper with an officer's name and rank on it. Next to the writing, you see a man stare, at back, uh, stare back at you, a younger version of you, already disintegrating inside, but still presentable on the outside. A police badge on which you see a photo of a man. You, some seaweed is stuck to the badge. I found my badge. The man in the photo looks at you solemnly. Let's study the badge. Encased between two durable plastic sheets is a bluish card with lines of information and watermark in the shape of the street grid of Revishol West. You see a photo, name, rank, document number, date of issue, and in the lower right corner, your precinct. Look at the photo. The man keeps winking at you with his green gray eyes. The photo's old, no doubt about that. But the badge is new. You used an old photo for a new badge. Good choice, a newer photo would look different. How old? Eight. Maybe ten years? The guy in the picture is rather good looking. He's got a nice haircut and is distinctly lacking in massive sideburns. And he's winking? Why? Why do you think? His face is already contorted by the expression. Although it does look less grotesque on him than it does on you now. The badge in your hands shines as you rotate it, catching light. You see lines of information on it and a shining watermark. Name, Harrier Dubois. This document confirms it. Harry Dubois, i.e. Harry, is your real name. Rank? LTN2JFR? That's what it says on the badge. No more information is provided. You should look at the badge when Lieutenant Kutsuragi is around. He can help you make sense of this. Uh, serial. Rev 12, 62, 05, uh, Jam 41. Huh. Let's see what that says. Revishol, Jamrock, Precinct 41. You don't remember what the middle numbers mean. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, date of issue, 7th of November, 50. The badge was issued roughly four months ago. A new document is given to you as part of a promotion. Or when you lose the old one. Precinct 41? The number shows that the badge belongs to an officer of the 41st Precinct. Put the badge away. Got it. 
Are there any visual calculus I can run on this scene right now? A bottle drained of all its booze, frozen to the ice. Yeah, that makes sense. This is it, the scene of the party. The fire pit, cigarettes, and empty bottles, all evidence. And empty bottles, all evidence it, rather. Uh, hold up. Don't you mean the scene of a crime? Not as such. I'm talking about what came after. The party scene. Sure does look like a lot of folks partied here. Looks like they were here a while, judging from all the bottles. The sunken motor carriage provided them a focal point. Like a goose ice sculpture. Or a chocolate fountain. Guess I'll be on my way then. Ooh, left some coins here from the future self. Lovely. those out in case I find some Tare bottles. Oh, hang on. The ice just off the coast crackles, shifting. What have you got to say about this yellow point? Uh, footprints in the snow. They lead away from the accident. Seems the walker was either very confused or drunk out of his mind. Uh, I'll tell you which one I think it was. There's a boat tucked away underneath the tarpaulin cover. The underside of the boat has been recently tarred. Alez Vuzen. Alez Vauzen? Okay, I don't want to get too far into this area because, like, the game itself did warn me don't, don't stray too far yet. But I have to at least check out the stuff that I find here. The boat is floating freely in the water, unmoored. Hang on. The plank creaks beneath your weight. Those are kookaburras outside, by the way, if you can hear them laughing. Uh, the ladder deals uh, leads to a school of fish swimming in the kelp. They're a uh, they're a breed of Australian uh, breed. They're a uh, species of Australian bird, I guess. Uh, yeah, they're a species of Australian bird that uh, laughs. Its its bird cry sounds like laughter it sounds like mocking laughter specifically like derisive laughter what are these doing in the fish franco nigerian cavalry bo uh, boots plus one to perception <laughs> kind of nice seeing cops around really Aye, officer. a woman in the raincoat stands on the quay considering an overturned boat a sword in a scabbard hangs from her hip anything i can help you with uh, that depends. Where are we exactly? A fishing village on the seashore. This place doesn't really have a name. It's sometimes called Elisable. Why? The sign on the street leading here is illegible. Has been since they built this place. The wind rattles her earrings. I've got questions. The first is, what's your name? The name is Lillian. People call me Net Picker. I think I have time for questions, and that was actually the second one. She gestures towards the fish nets. Indeed, you're always confused as to your whereabouts. Ask her about the cool sword. Helps to break the ice. Uh, nice sword. Point at the saber on her hip. Does it come with a story? Unfortunately, the uh, factory sold me this one with a three-year warranty instead of a story. Uh, she smiles at her own joke. Hates to intimidate folks, mostly. I need to get higher pitched while doing that voice, but the way that I do it doesn't, doesn't go higher. I'm gonna keep trying though. Hold on, do you know how to use it? Not really. I know some basic moves and I sure as hell beats a knife, but you're in a tough spot when you're in a tough spot. It is imposing. It's like a regular mass produced sword, like a shovel or axe. Nothing fancy, just for intimidation. Why do you need intimidation tactics? From time to time, people need to learn a lesson in respect. That's just the way it is. Back in the day, I caught many a men and believed. It caught the eyes of many men and believe me, she adds, tittering. Men need a lesson in manners from time to time. <laughs> Figures, typical patriarchal nonsense, masculine venomosity. <laughs> What they're referring to is the phenomenon of toxic masculinity. Uh, I would say figures. Ah, uh, sure. Venomosity. But boys will be boys, and God knows we don't have many of our own. So far, the sword has 
Been enough to keep him in line. Can I borrow the sword? No, I'm afraid not. Her eyes are smiling as her hand moves the kilt. Attempting to confiscate the blade, I'll, uh... <laughs> I used to keep these animals in check. You'd put me in an early grave. Why don't more women arm themselves if it's so effective? What makes you think we haven't? <laughs> she smiles. <laughs> Uh, the truth is, it's almost everyone in this life is scared and tired and stupid and too dull for that. That goes for the men too. But they put on an act for us. Pretend like everything's good and living in shit doesn't bother them. Like anyone falls for that. Behold! Pointed the expression on my face. Her eyes meet yours and suddenly she starts laughing. It's hoarse. As if she hasn't laughed in a while. Not bad. Did you like it? Sh sh uh, sure! <laughs> Her face straightens. It looks as if you could face down any horror in the world with the same unchanging grin. It's like a shield. I, I moved from her accent, but for like five lines there, I had it locked in. The traces of laughter are still there in her eyes, fading fast. So where are all the men now? Some went to patch up their wounds, their lessons learned. Others were more thick headed. She looks down. And one of them I ended up marrying. Wait, why? If they're thick-headed, I guess I enjoyed the way he bled. Uh, her expression doesn't change. It's hard to say if this is a joke. If it is, then why the melancholy? Where's your husband now? Uh, gone. <laughs> husband gone. Husband gone. But where has he gone to? Husband gone. Uh. God, coward! I would never leave anyone. That's just gonna make my brain hate me because I'm pretty sure I uh, either left or got left. And I might have left first. Gone where? To the waves. Uh, her eyes stop in yours. The sea took him. It was a long time ago. Oh. Say no more. Wait for her to continue. He didn't respect the sea. Went out there drunk as a skunk. And sure enough, one day the boat was found floating empty. The bloated corpse turned up two weeks later. Now, before you tell me how sorry you are for my loss, know that it was four years ago and I've moved on. There's only so much mourning you can do for a drunk with sinewy muscles. <laughs> yeah, Harry will figure that out uh, if there's an afterlife, I guess. Death is nothing. I shit on death, no. It's healthy to let go and move on. Got to keep the wheels spinning. I mean, yes. Us working folk don't have the luxury to be bed sick with melancholy. She crosses her arm. I also don't necessarily think it's good for you. As someone who has oft wallowed in melancholy, I don't necessarily think it's as, as, <laughs> as helpful as just trying to continue functioning. Um, you know, easier said than done, though. She crosses her arms. I buried him, mourned for an appropriate amount of time, and then went on. She glances at the village where the two kids are playing with looks like, uh, with what looks like rocks. Life didn't really change much for me and the kids. This is neither a touching nor a very interesting topic for her. She looks like she's ready to go on another date with a better drunk. Ask her. Both of you need some action. Don't know a good spot yet. Explore the coast. Yeah, I mean, she's got a no-nonsense attitude. I'm into it. Uh, I'm looking for someone. Maybe you can help. Let's see. She tilts her head ever so slightly. Who are you looking for? I'm looking for missing cryptozoologists. Ugh. She frowns, thinking, I don't care to... I, I don't think I know what those are. Care to elaborate? People who look for animals mainstream scientists deny exist. No, people who look for imaginary... Animals. Ah! She claims. Like snowmen! Snowmen? I haven't heard about those. Two odd guys have been wandering around here, and all's in the sands, talking nonsense about snowmen in the lake. Ah, the traveling accent. I, 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 I don't need to mention the accent constantly. I'm trying to remind myself of that. Sorry about it. Wait, the like? Right. She nods. Not only snowmen, also green men, monkey men, burning rhinos. Yeah, you get the picture. Oh, you're getting it, and it is gorgeous. Where did they go? I oh, don't really know. Further down the peninsula, I guess. I mean, that's where they were headed. She points north. What else are you looking for besides snowmen? A uh, working-class husband. Yeah, 
I'm not really looking for that anymore. Not much into middle class ones either. <laughs> she sighs. I could use some landed gentry. <laughs> but apparently they don't make those anymore. They do, just not here. The husband isn't for me. I'm looking for him for his wife. Wish I could help you with that, but I haven't seen your working class husband. Maybe I could help you find someone else. She seems genuinely sorry for not being able to help you. That's it. I'm not looking for anyone else right now. Uh, how can I help you? Uh, what do you do around here? Like I said, fish mostly. Sail the waves. Take care of the kids. Pick nets. Right now I'm a little, um, tarring a little skiff. What else? I sell the fish to the people at the Delta to serve their fancy restaurants. Authentic Insulindian cuisine. And is that enough to make a living? Sometimes I also walk up to the beach to see what the sea has given up. The sea is full of surprises. Keep it professional, man. Don't make it sound like you're hitting on her. This is what's called a conversation. You don't have to be guarded right now. Interesting. What have you found? Wood. Piece of glass. Every once in a while, we see dead bodies. Human. Animal. Fish. Other odd sea creatures. A wave washed ashore once. A mine, rather, washed ashore once. She looks at the beach and continues. Bottles, drugs, also. Lost cargo in general. Most of the time, it's just wooden glass. All right, major choice moment. You only get to ask one thing. It would be weird to say them all. Choose widely. I need to know about those human bodies. Yeah. I, I care, like... Arming myself or... You know, drugs. I... Neither of those really matter as much as the loss of human life, seems to me. Uh, need to know about the human bodies. Well, you're barking under the wrong tree then, officer. She shares her head. I have no interest in floaters. Seen enough of them in my life already. A very unattractive bunch. Yeah, maybe steer clear of the things reminding her of the floater she used to be married to. Just saying. Uh, I take it that's your skiff? Point at the overturned boat. Sure is. The sun I call her. Coated with a fresh tar of, uh, layer of tar just yesterday. It'll take some time to dry. Assuming the sunny days continue. I don't know a good spot yet, so be seeing you around. I wasn't really planning on continuing to explore this area, but I really want to uh, continue the conversation with her later, so I guess I just have to. The woman next to the bucket of clothes hums an odd melody. Her eyes are closed. Welcome to the fishing village. Please lean in closer. I have cataracts. She opens her eyes. Then how does she know you're there? Well, you can... You can kind of sense someone's presence. Uh, lean forward. Oh, welcome, police officer. We don't cause any trouble around here. And we don't want any trouble either. We're cops. We're hell raiders. Click, click, bang, bang. Point your finger pistols at her. No, you're not. I've seen you around here before. Twelve years ago. You didn't raise any hell. You were quite helpful, actually. But still, in Martinez, you're considered an ill omen. Wait, I've been here before? No, not you personally. I meant the RCM. Some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. At the RCM, some of the men got into a fight. One of them killed another. Locked himself in that woodshed over there. Let's look at the he was brooding, needed some help opening the door. You got it open for him and took him to think about what he'd done in a more secluded place. Somewhere more quiet. Prison. She says as if he was on some kind of spiritual retreat. What kind of an ill omen are we talking about? Oh, the usual. Dark tidings. Black hound. That's you, all right. A black hound licking at your own heels. Uh, I am an ill omen, all right? If I'm considered an ill omen, why hasn't anyone told me Maybe that? Maybe they're afraid. Why? Because you're an ill omen, 
But you're still welcome here, as long as men with guns aren't chasing you. And maybe even then, because that's the kind of fishing village we've built. I'm sorry there's not a lot of room to park your motor carriage. And not a lot of houses. Or a lot of people. My kids are long gone, searching for treasure. So are others. Ah, look at me ramble on. What brings you to us? What's further down the coast? Not much, she uh, replies and wipes her forehead. There's the abandoned church, the DeLorean Church of Humanity. It's been there since even before my time. Why is it abandoned? Some things just don't fly, officer. She smiles a gap toothed smile and smells the air. Look around. Who'd go to a church here? They built it 300 years ago. Must have been nicer then. The ecclesiasts have tried to get things going here, but things just keep happening. Crime, accidents, other things. The place never stays open. She frowns. It's a pity. It used to be such a nice church. She's not telling you everything she knows. Keep her talking. What else is on the down coast? Before you get to the church, there's some ruins. An apartment complex or some kind of electrical plant. Run down bunch of houses. Empty. Wait, which is it then? Apartments or an electrical plant? I don't know exactly. A pre-war place. It used to be something. She shrugs. Before the war. I wasn't here then, you know. Was born in Samara. Anything else of note? Of note? The old fish market up on the boardwalk, but it's closed. Who'd want to come to a fish market here? Uh-uh. That's it? There's got to be more along that coast. What? You're one of those real estate people with big plans? If you want a development opportunity, you can check out the abandoned buildings over at Land's End. Used to be a supply depot. We think. Sending goods and ammo across the bay. It's jammed shut though. We tried to get in, still to see if there was anything to scavenge or sell, but it's impossible. She drops a bar of soap into the bucket with a splash. And now you know everything there is to know about the coast. Why could someone stay around here? Stay? Most people here are trying to leave. That said, if lodging's what you're looking for, I've got a free room in the shack. So her soapy thumbs point to the building behind her. How much is it? I won't charge you for it. Take it as a gesture of goodwill from the village to the RCM. Wait, hold on. You're just giving it to me? There's this guy, Gant, who makes me... <laughs> yeah, all right. I guess we're going to have a landlord uh, discourse right here. There's this guy, Gant, who makes me pay him money every night. Just so I don't die out in the cold. Mm-hmm. That's exactly where they get you. That's why we built our own cinder block houses on the seaside. We don't have to give money to those cooks. She looks around. They might not look like much, but they're ours. You have yourself a new tenant. Don't make an old woman regret opening her house to the police. <laughs> she, uh, a key appears from under the apron. She hands it to you. What is in this uh, fishing village? Just us. She sounds tired. It's barely a village anymore. We almost don't exist. What do you mean? This is pretty much a known place. She grins. A gap. A blank spot on the map. A, just a cluster of nameless shacks on a nameless street. The place is so pornographically poor, it's not even funny. <laughs> I don't know what you're implying by saying it's pornographic, like explicitly poor. It's so obscenely poor, I think, is what they're going for. Um, it's gotta be something here. Tell me, who else lives in this village? Who else lives in this village? Well, there's Lillian and her kids. A few new folks live to the house in the east. She nods across the courtyard. But they're away right now. And then there's the drunks. She sighs. Not a pretty sight, but there's little we can do about it. Home is home. Even for them. I met Mil uh, Lillian already. Lillian is tough. She nods. Tougher than the men here, at least. If it wasn't for her and the kids, 
this place would have uh, wouldn't have a spark of life left. I haven't seen any drunks yet though. Sooner or later you will see it for yourself. She slowly shakes her head. Don't have to look long to find these guys. Right, there's another topic I'd like to address. Uh, goodbye, I'm off. The reason is because we're about to reach. Uh, in fact, we've just reached 40 minutes, which means that also because there's probably like a lot of that conversation left. I imagine it's probably going to go for another 10 at least for the moment. My name is Rhapsody. The name of the game has been Disco Elysium. There is a playlist in the description down below with all my content of the game past, present, and future, and hopefully we'll see you next time.